apprenticeship? Yes, I worked for uh, uh, a company. I was in an, an insurance repair general contractor, and I, I did a three-year apprenticeship. I started in 1978, and I graduated in 1981. Oh, wow. And how... And what career path did you take from there on? Uh, I, I spent a lot of time working in uh, maintenance. I, I worked uh, for uh, different, uh, for another uh, insurance repair contractor in Tacoma. And then I got into working in the hotels and the buildings downtown and I was able to get uh, a, pa a path that got me into uh, working maintenance in the school district and the housing authorities. And, and then those jobs, you get laid off a lot because of budgets. Yeah. And then you go back and work for the general contractors. Hmm. There, there, there's a, you, you get families that you work with, and uh, uh, one of them, uh, the father and the son I've worked with, and uh, both of them were extremely good painters. The father uh, was uh, Ted Thorlaxon, a a, a very strong uh, painter with skills, and he would uh, he would help you and point out things to you. One of the things I remember is uh, Ted said to me. He said, "Stan, people think I'm fast, but you know, look, it's the end of the day, and there's my pot and there's my brush." And all I got to do is dump paint into it and go to work. He says, I can have three door jams painted before you're ready to go out and start working. <laughs> and that always helped me. And I, I got it. That you got you to gotta be prepared to spring into action. Yeah. There, there, there's a... You, you get families that you work with, and uh, uh, one of them, uh, the father and the son I've worked with, and uh, both of them were extremely good painters. The father uh, was uh, Ted Thorlaxon, a, a, a very strong uh, painter with skills, and he would, uh, he would help you, and point out things to you. One of the things I remember is uh, Ted said to me, he said, Stan, people think I'm fast, but you know, look, it's the end of the day, and there's my pot, and there's my brush, and all I got to do is dump paint into it and go to work. He says, I can have three door jams painted before you're ready to go out and start working. <laughs> and that always helped me, and I, I got it, that you gotta, you gotta be prepared to spring into action. Yeah. Again. 35 years, I had 35 years. I had 17 years that I worked, uh, 17 full years in 17 years of 12 months per year. And it took me about 22 years to get that 17 uh, years total from uh, the Seattle School District. What I'm saying is I got laid off for up to five years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so then the other time I worked uh, for, oh yeah. And how that came about. Yeah, the Van Assel job. I love the Van Assel job in the building. I worked there on the whole, on that school, it's a big complex, and I worked on that complex for probably 26, 30 months. 
and part of it was painting this uh, old, old building that had wood uh, siding on it, this small lap siding that has a three inch, two and a half inch reveal. And they had brought in a contractor who not only had non-union, was non-union, but he, he was hiring people without skills. And the contractor put up a product that was wavy, inconsistently nailed, uh, was poor quality, and it didn't uh, pass the minimum standards. And it was because the, the union came in and saw this and uh, investigated the contractor and found the contractor to be in violation of the contract. And the, uh, the manager for the school district was hiring people who were his friends basically and this resulted in the uh, the job having to have the siding removed and reapplied with uh, material that uh, meant the quality standards and, and and then it had to be applied with uh, labor that could correctly, that had the skills to uh, uh, to do the job to uh, uh, standards. And then the, the job manager turned out to have a lot of problems beyond that. And for various reasons, he ended up with a three year sentence in federal prison. I think some of the training that we had uh, was just marking time and that we had to go and to, for instance, our first class was a spray class and we spent a lot of time going through this book and we didn't really even do spraying. I think nowadays th there's more of a skill-based agenda with a broader skill-based agenda so that you, you learn more and you don't spend time uh, just, you don't just pass your time through. You, you do something positive for learning. Uh, you need to do it. You, you, need to, you need to establish yourself as somebody that they can trust. You need to go to work every day, no matter what. It's going to take, my experience has been, it, it takes at least two years of showing up every day on the job before your boss really has confidence in you going to work. So you need to go to work every day. And you need to, uh, be a helpful person and try to, to bring something to help the others on the job. And just th uh, try to learn from the more experienced people and pick up their, their skills. You can even ask them to help you, and they'll be glad. They told me that uh, really is good is it's a rare working man that saves money. It seems even rarer working man who retires with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So to think you're going to save money for your retirement as a working person, no, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. You know the problem we had in the last. Uh, recession was uh, the great recession we call it was 
consumers didn't have the money to spend because you know, the United States economy is a consumer driven economy and this uh, not providing the retired population with money to spend could end up burning the whole economy in the long run, you know? Absolutely. And so these people who want to change retirement, make it less, more on you, it might come back to burn the whole economy. And basically, the people who put that money in their pockets. Yeah. It's like uh, there's a, a guy down the street on 4th Avenue that owns a... Uh, uh, auto repair shop. He tells me that the first quarter he's paid his social security tax. He makes enough money. That yeah. that's, that's it. Okay. Now he's got a son that's there that's all he can do to run a little uh, Philadelphia cheese uh, sandwich shop that he's put in there to try to teach his son business. And his son isn't going to get it in my estimation. <laughs> you know? So what's he doing? He's, you know, is he going to take his son's retirement and put it in his pocket? And then his children are not going to have a retirement because yeah. he took it off on the front? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... I don't think they think about that. Greed is such a big thing that you want every dime you get, you know. Yeah, you forget everything. I think I heard, I heard on the radio this morning they said 70% of Americans don't even have one month of reserves in their bank account. Yeah, yeah. Not even one month. Yeah. It's hand to mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So saving for retirement is just it's out of the there. question. It's not there, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you do have it, you're going to spend it. Yeah. <laughs> right. 